Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Run Pain Free Podcast. I am your host, Jessica Marie Rose Leggio, and this podcast is brought to you by the Run Pain Free Program, where we help people in pain and runners with injuries fix, heal, and correct their ailments through our injury recovery programs. And you can get more information at www.injuryrecoveryprogram.com. We are talking a lot today. We have a whole bunch of stuff to go over, and it's on the board in front of you, if you will. If you're tuning into our podcast in Podbean or iTunes, thank you for tuning in. But make sure you come on over to our YouTube channel to see all the visuals we got hooked up for you now. And uh, we are going over things like shin splints today. We are going to go over Jessica's reacts. We're going to see what I'm going to see online and actually react to it. A bunch of eye rolls coming your way. Uh, Then we're going to do expert injury analysis on shin splints. And then we're going to do our case study. Today is going to be about Nancy, who actually came to us for shin splints. And we interviewed her and her whole story is going to be also in this amazing podcast we have in store for you. So without further ado, let's go on into my rant about shin splints. Ah, shin splints is something that everybody deals with for the most part in the beginning of running. A lot of people think it's normal and it's a constant chronic thing you have forever. That is complete hogwash. And when I mean hogwash, I mean it's correctable. I don't mean that you're not in pain. I know shin splints hurt, but they are the first sign that you have an actual hip problem. Knee pain and shin splints are the first two things that start with you as a runner, but knee pain is pretty much constant. So you don't let that one go as much as a shin splint is let go. Comparatively, the shin splint is let go longer because it's on and off and it's because it's trying to do things. And there's a whole bunch of muscles down there that are all trying to do the same thing, flex your ankle, point your ankle. And and, uh, if anything is locking that up, be it your function or dysfunction or the sneaker you chose, like a stability sneaker, uh, you are kind of up Sits Creek without a paddle, so to speak. So these muscles get overexhausted and people just think that's normal for being a runner when it's not the case. And so a lot of people will message me and say, hey, I'm about to defer this marathon because I have shin splints. And it literally makes me shoot fire out of my ears because nothing is faster or easier to fix than honestly a shin splint. Now, if you're foam rolling and sticking and balling and doing all these things, but you're staying in a stability sneaker, you're not going to fix anything because stability sneakers literally create shin splints. So even if you're somebody who is a full foot function runner and is running with good form, if you're in a shin splint that doesn't allow that mobility at the foot and whatever the ankle can't do, the hip can't do. And again, you already have some level of hip dysfunction. And so it kind of just keeps looping down there. And so shin splints should not be an issue, but they should be the first issue you don't let go because then you're going to have a real problem. So it's one of the things where I say to like, Uh, differentiate between an ache and a pain and an injury. Shin splints is an ache and a pain. It's not an injury. Injury is a torn hip labrum, stuff like that. So that's the difference, but it leads to it. Again, it doesn't mean you're not in pain. It just means you can fix it a lot faster if you grab it. So saying that and going into, you know, everybody over here loving these, these sneakers, these, these Brooks over here, you know, you can clearly see this is their actual site. And this is, I'm going to react to this right now because it's what I came across online. And uh, you can see clearly somebody, one of them is a toe striker. And you can see, I'll pull this up a little bit. This, the guy, he is hitting full foot. He's hitting it flat though. And he's gonna be right on top of his leg. So that's gonna actually jam his hip every time he goes in. Cause the sneaker itself is not gonna let him roll through. Her, she's gonna land right on her toe. And so toe strikers make up the majority of running injuries, just so you know. So if you're a toe striker and a stability sneaker wearer, you're going to be at the top of the line with injuries and probably years of injuries because of those two things. You need to be full foot function where he probably is trying to do that because that's natural, but the sneaker disallows it. So I wanted to show this picture because it shows somebody attempting to run properly, but that sneaker locking it up. And the problem with this is that the muscles that literally are picking up that toe like that are along your shin. (laughs) So they're getting exhausted because the sneaker is making them stay flexed and stay up as opposed to pointing. You never roll through. If you don't roll through, you never extend your ankle, which is pointing your toe. And so you have that side of it, or you have it like her, where she's literally gonna land on her toe and and prance like Bambi. And that's just gonna overexhaust all of the outer shin muscles, all the lower leg muscles, gonna exhaust them. And your calf muscles, both of your calf calf muscles job is to point. 
So if you're landing in a point the whole time and your sneaker is forcing you to point the whole time, you are essentially just staying with a flexed calf muscle the whole time. So that's really gonna cause a lot of problems. And so this is what I wanted to show as an example of two people just running. And again, these are images. So these are models at best, right? They're not like real runners. They may be runners, they may be fitness models, I've done a lot of work in, in, in the fitness industry. I've worked with a lot of fitness models. They very well could be that, but they're not your pro athlete. They're not running like that. So they're running very quote natural, if you will. And so it's a good depiction of what regular people are doing out there and how your natural footing, it can be locked up or dictated by a stability sneaker like this guy. I can guarantee you plantar fasciitis and shin splints with Brooks. It's no offense to the sneaker company, it's just what it does to an actual distance runner. So before we go any further than that, let's get into these actual muscles. And what I wanna show you is all of these lower leg muscles, we're gonna analyze shin splints now. All these lower leg muscles are exhausted because this is a hip dysfunction issue. This muscle that I'm showing you right here, that is the sartorius muscle. And what the sartorius muscle is, it is the number two hip flexor. So this muscle comes into your shin, literally, and comes up the inside of your leg and crosses to the outside. It's above your hip, uh, but someone would consider that outer hip. But again, that's not proper anatomy. So this is across all of your quads and it's, uh, dictating how your your hip your hip flexes extends your knee hinges if there's anything going on in that area it's not gonna let that happen and then what did I just say flexes your knee both your calf muscles so this muscle literally is gonna be heavily involved in whether or not you're flexing your knee at all as is all of these lower leg muscles and so all of these guys because this is pulling way up top here it pulls muscularly the kneecap inward. And then on the outside of this, you have your IT band. Now, please note, this is this is an app, okay? And the IT band is fascia, and fascia is all over our bodies, and there's three different levels of fascia. This is a pattern within the fascia system. It does not stop where that yellow line stops, okay? It continues, it goes all the way up outside the glute, covers the entire glute, 80% of it, okay? Crosses the entire side, uh, back to the back across to the opposite shoulder, creating a literal diagonal across the back. And so that is what the IT band actually does. So this is not a great depiction of that band. However, I needed to point it out because of where it is. You see where it is on the knee, right below the kneecap underneath the shin? It actually is coming in right there where you see that muscle. Okay, so let's look at this muscle, shall we? This muscle here, this guy right here. So I call it the DL, the tor dig digitorium longus, but I call it the DL because I never say it right properly. <laughs> um, but this muscle goes all the way down and look what it does. It goes into the top of your foot and dictates all of these little itty bitty feet muscles. So to be more active, I'm gonna show you this guy and this is what it actually does. If you look, you can see, I'm gonna tap it again. You see how the toes are coming up and down right there? Guess what this guy's doing? Look at that foot, right? And now look back at this dude. You see his foot? That's exactly what's happening. So what muscle is being exhausted right now? The DL, you got it. And so that muscle is literally where you feel shin splints. That is what's happening is that that is so flexed and it's pulling up and these are little itty bitty muscles. Look at how little those muscles are. Look at how little they are. And they're flipping up. And then what's happening is your foot is kind of staying that way. It's staying, it's staying flexed. If you are running like that guy, that is what's flexing. These muscles are overworking. Now, if you are pointing your toe, that muscle also does also flex the ankle. So if he's trying to go full foot function in a stability sneaker, that's not gonna let him point down from that position because it's gonna lock up, he's gonna land flat, just like he just did. While she, she is literally pointing her foot. So I'm going to get the other muscles. Uh, see, okay, so this is this guy. Now, this is the posterior tibialis, which is on the back side of your shin, but it's really right on the side inside of it. Uh, and where people feel posterior uh, tibialis is, 
posterior shin splints inside your calf, like on the inside of the sucker. See right here. Okay, so this is your soleus. It's another calf muscle, but for I want to show you that this is also where that posterior tibialis is. It's just on the back side. This is again this guy here. So it's on the back side of that, but the soleus literally covers, and I'll show you on another on the other app. I'm going to show you. Okay, uh, that's that's your gastric nemus. That's your soleus. Um, so this guy here. So it's the entire it's the entire backside of the leg pointing your toe. So she now is just landing in her toe. So she's never dropping her heel. So it's kind of like if you want to run full foot function in a stability sneaker, we're not going to let you actually roll through. So you're going to land flat. You're going to jam your knee. You're going to jam. You're going to keep your toes er erect, basically, which is going to overfire the um, the DL muscle, the digitorium longus. And then if you're if you wanted to be a toe striker, great. We're going to keep you in that position where you're going to stay prancing on your toes or you're just going to keep your, your calves flexed the whole time while you're also using your posterior tibialis, which is also going to fire right underneath your calf. All of these things is why you get shin splints. There's a lot of muscles down there creating a lot of pull on this muscle. And so because of that, you then have a very limited action with the sartorius, which is the second hip flexor. And so this is why this guy, I need to pull back in. This is why this guy becomes such a huge component as to why this is a hip rooted issue. Shin splints are a hip rooted issue. Again, it's one of the first signs of it because all of these guys down below, all these lower leg muscles are overworking and they're exhausted. So kind of shin splints to me is of exhaustion. Everything is exhausted. The minute you release the strain and everything locking, uh, the, the tissue locking the muscle dysfunction in place. When you release all of that and get all this blood flowing there and actually take your foot out of the stability sneaker, you kind of go away quick with shin splints, but so many people refuse to take their foot out of, the, out of the sneaker, out of the stability sneaker, and they could do all the stuff I say, but it still keeps them locked in with some shin splints because they're still in a stability sneaker or a sneaker that's promoting toe striking, like a Nike Zoom Fly. Those promote toe striking. Anything that tilts you forward, a high heel tilting you forward. If you're in any of these sneakers, that's why you have shin splints. Now, uh, that's what the analysis of shin splints are. And I really wanted to give you some a little in depth and I wanted you to see all these things because I believe in visuals and I know visuals help. I'm a visual person. And so next time you're out there and you feel shin pain or you feel, you know, calf or so anything down there getting exhausted. Now you have a visual of what it is. So uh, now what I want you to do is take a listen to this because we're going to go into Nancy's story, but I got to let you hear something first. It's going to help you even further now that you heard this expert analysis. If you liked this injury expert analysis, then you will love this new book because it lays it all out for you. Check it out here, www.runpainfreenow.com forward slash book. Okay, so now we're gonna get into Nancy's actual story. So you got the background, you got my whole rant on shin splints, which was kind of nice, not for nothing if you know me. Uh, so now we're gonna get into Nancy. Nancy came to us for shin splints, and I wanna tell you this, she came to us with freezer burn. She literally froze her shins with ice. A lot of things you see on Google are generalized, literally for your safety, because they really can't give you like specifics on what you should do. So half, I'm well, being nice, maybe 70% of it, is uh, being generalized and then 30% is they just really don't know because there's not a mobility specialist out on there giving you Google information. That's what Run Pain Free is for you. So I wanted to go over that part of it. So Nancy came to us because she was really doing all the wrong things and luckily she found us, but let's get a hit, let's get a listen in on her story and what she was doing when she came on to find us and how she found running. And, um... What race is my favorite race is the Port Jeff run to the brewery um, because it's 15 K and it's all like major, major hills, like the worst you could imagine. Um, and you just feel like incredible when you finish it. And um, aside from that, um, I do love Disney races because they're so much fun, um, even though I don't stop for character stops because I want to still get a good time. 
Um, and the London Marathon was definitely my favorite marathon of all time. And to be a runner at all, um, but I was in the process of, of losing weight at the time. And I had gone into my local Starbucks and I had been down maybe about 30 pounds at that time. And the barista looked at me and he said, you look good, you're losing weight. I said, well, you know, I'm getting there. He's like, you're a runner. I said, I am not a runner. I'm like, I am a fat girl. And he was like, no, 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 uh-uh. He's like, I want you to meet me at such and such place and I'm gonna teach you how to run. And I was like, I, I can't afford to do this. And, um, but he was cute. And I was like, well, you know, I'm maybe I should go. And so I did. And he taught me how to run. Um, it, it was, I, I fell in love with the, with the process. So, and oh, why I do it. I run? Um, I mean, that particular start of running got me to lose over a hundred pounds. Um, so it definitely is a, um, a fitness piece of it to me. Um, but it also definitely helps me maintain my sanity. Um, I, I struggle with depression in the past and, um, if I'm feeling off, uh, I can go out and run and, and grab those endorphins and I'm back. To be a runner at, how to run. Um, it Sorry about that. So I wanted to play that part of her interview because I know so many people start running for that reason, at either for health or mental, it's two of the top reasons people run. And everybody's why is really important and personal to them. It's one of my favorite questions to ask people when I interview them. But uh, at, what, at the point when you get injured, that why comes back really strongly. And so I, I wanted to share how candid she was about it because so many people can really benefit from that. So that's where she was when she came around to us. Let's talk about now how she actually found Run Pain Free. Everything for me. Um, I came to Run Pain Free when I was trying to, uh, when I was training for the New York City Marathon and my, um, I was in bad shape and uh, I was desperate to find something and I found one of your free sessions and um, instantly felt like, wow, I, I could do this. Like I, maybe I can actually do this marathon. And you know, it, you got me to the marathon in eight weeks of training with a 24 minute PR. So come on now, kudos <laughs> to you. So Nancy, that is true. She came to us and she wasn't running at all, like literally at all. And uh, I was really excited for her to, to to have that that result. But let's talk about what she was doing pre-run pain-free because I think that's always uh, a good a good a good thing to understand that you're not alone. <laughs> Everybody does quite quite the same thing. So over the years, because that was several years ago now, and. I mean, I've had little things here and there that come up, you know, um, and we know when, when we're going through correction, there's different pieces that the body is adapting and other things come out, unfortunately. Um, and it's Run Pain Free has helped me to continue my sport. And this is really, even though I may not be running the longest and the fastest right now, this is the longest period of time with Run Pain Free that I've had no issues. Um, so it's it's really, it's a lifesaver. I love like what I thought were shin splints. Um, my, my feet were killing me. Um, I got orthotics and spent all this money on things to try to continue the sport. Um, and it, it was a struggle, you know, I would go out and run and I'd be in pain by the end of it, or maybe I couldn't do the whole thing. Um, or there were times where I just could not run and I just, I just it just wasn't something I could do. Um, it was just one thing after another, constant. And so many people go through that because what I keep, what I always tell you guys in the podcast and in our events and just if I'm on my live stream and if you need to follow me on social media so you can always jump onto my live stream because I answer questions live a lot of the time. But it's because the pain is never where you're feeling it, is never where it's from. It's coming from somewhere else. And until you find somewhere else, it'll continue to do that. 
So if you're doing that, if it's on your own and it's going all over the place, that's a, that's a you know key sign that it's you're not getting at it. When you're in correction, I call that ping-ponging because we're literally backdooring the whole thing to figure out where it's coming and we're attacking wherever it's coming from real time. So it's again, this specialty, mobility specialty is real and it's for reasons like that. But I wanted to share that because so many people have done exactly that. You know, you do all of these things and you're still not getting anywhere. But then again, right away, she said in the beginning of it, she said, you know, she's able, she was able to stay in sport. And that's such a huge thing. We literally created the programming to keep people in sport while they're in correction on purpose. The sport is what we use as a part of the program because we're special here at Run Pain Free. All right, so let's get into more things that uh, Nancy was talking about during her interview with us. And uh, let's see, we'll go here. So I know what I need to do when I'm running, you know, and, and I don't do intervals. I just, you know, I run until I can. And, and then if I need to take a quick break and, um, you know, work on my breathing and my, my foot placement and everything, you know, um, I continue, you know, I'm able to continue on. Um, but if you want to know like where it's brought me, um, I mean, I, I did six marathons, you know, and four in one year. I never, ever would have thought that would ever happen to me. Um, you That's know, so huge. That's and that's a huge thing is what I was saying to her in our in our interview right there. Uh, it's because, you know, she really she really didn't believe she was going to even do that one New York City, let alone again, New York City is November. So she ran four marathons in one year that following year, starting in January. And, and most of them were world majors. So it just to see someone go from, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to run this race and then run four in one year and has ran six since and countless, countless half marathons. Uh, it's, it's quite amazing. And I'm glad she brought up intervals because we do a lot of work with that and it is a high injury. It is a high injury method. Although I understand and respect the method, it is a high injury method. Uh, so she was a huge walker also, and she has walked New York city marathon literally from start to finish. She walked the whole thing. I believe it was 2018 that she did it and did it with a friend as she had the ability to, to run, but she actually walked it with a friend because she was a huge walker. So I'm going to play a little part where she actually talks about her walking because uh, I wanted to be very clear on what it what she means when she's walking. Uh, it's real. <laughs> marathon. I decided I was going to walk a half marathon every other week. And eventually I did run a half marathon with that training plan, so to speak. Um, so over this past winter specifically, really, has been a big time walking time for me. Um, I have walked, um, you know, I'll do eight miles two days in a row, and I do a half marathon walk, uh, definitely every month, sometimes twice a month. And then I decided, you know what, I might as well take it up a notch. And so I did 14 and then I did 15 miles walked. Um, and in a couple of weeks, um, I'm going to go for 16. So Nancy is known to send me videos while she's on a marathon, a half marathon, or a very long race of any sort. And so when she sent me that she was walking, I didn't even know that she had was walking 15 miles. I didn't get it. I didn't it didn't com compute for me at all until I saw her in session. And she's like, no, no, I walked that. And I was just blown away. But you know what? Again, we want you to do whatever you want here. So if you want to walk 15 miles, I want you to do it pain-free. And so that's what she wants to do. That's what she does. So, but she's consistently learning what her potential is. And that's what the, the program ha has really shown her. So I wanted to also share where she was in terms of deciding to do the programming and uh, what that was like for her making, making those decisions. That where I, I mean, I went to your, your free session and then I was like, oh, I feel great. I, I remember running that night. I was shocked and I hadn't been walking to work. I was totally disabled essentially um, for months before that free session. I ran that night. I, I was shocked. Um, but, you know, I was like, okay, I can do this. I, I'm, I'm all right. I'll just do what she told me to do and I'll be fine. I don't need to do the program. And you know, then it was like, I, I don't, I don't know if I can. And it, it's, and hmm, how do I say it? It's not just the program 
but it's you like you like inspire people like i get this sense of like i can do anything like i um you give people that self confidence and i needed that and the run pain free program inspires us to embrace what we can do and not what we can't do and that's what i really needed um and to to move forward I couldn't take the take the chance anymore that i wasn't going to meet my goals and so yeah. i needed run pain free to do it to help me to to reach them couldn't take the and that's a lot of places where people come from. You know, she she didn't want to take the risk of anymore not being able to do. She does run, she did run Disney. She's done Dopey. Um, she does a lot of the Disney races. She's gone all over the world running World Major. She has her national races that she likes that you know that are all across the country. And it's just something she loves to do. And it wasn't worth the risk anymore to not be able to do it. And we do get so many people who get to that point. And again, she did everything under the sun like everybody else did, and it got worse it just kept getting worse and worse and worse so i was so thankful that she found us because she's an amazing runner she's an amazing athlete and she didn't even realize it because she was so stuck in the mud you know so to speak so uh once she started the programming and literally started to do so well so fast uh i asked her what surprised her the most about the programming and this is what she had to say about the program how well it works you know <laughs> And I mean, you know, it's like it was so fast that I suddenly felt better, you know, and like like I can do the things I want to do and not be in pain. Um, it's just, I guess, really, that was the thing that surprised me the most. So many people say that, and I can't wait for you all to hear it because we're going to do a bunch of case studies in these podcasts coming up this season. And I've asked everybody that question, and most of them say. It's just that it works. And it's because you're going through so many things and you're like, oh, nothing's going to work. But again, we are specialists here. We are actual experts here. We know what it takes to figure out what's going on with you. And all we really need is your will to want to get better to actually fix you because it's what we do here. And the, again, as a myself, a product of the program, I know what it is to go through those ruts and to get through it and to get to the other side of it. And so I'm happy to share that with people and, and see them running whatever they want to run or biking or tri sport or an Ironman or hiking, whatever it is, trail running, basketball, whatever it is that people want to do, just do it with fun and do it, you know, pain free, obviously. So uh, then she wanted to have, she wanted to talk about being on, uh, you know, people being on the fence. If people were on the fence about the run pain free run or the run program, because it's so unlike anything you've heard of <laughs> or anything I say, you never hear anywhere else, but with me. So she wanted to talk about that too. To, you know, I mean, I know a lot of times people think, oh gosh, do I have the funds? Do I have the money to, to join a, another program or but we join the gym, we join all these things, we go to the doctor, we get orthotics that cost $450, you know, and, and or we are depressed and we're, we're not happy, you know, and you can't put a value on that. So I just think, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's invaluable. And um, it, for me, it has been. And I really think that if anybody who's struggling, they really should just, bite the bullet, go for it, because you will be really shocked at how much it, it, it's going to give you. So, yeah, no, it's definitely, um, and, and I mean, I've seen many PRs since I um, found Run Pain Free, um, and, and it, it just, it continues, so, yeah. yeah. And another thing, Nancy, actually, this we, we did this uh, early in 2021, this interview, and she, within four weeks, ran two half marathons within four weeks, and she PR'd the, her, mar her half marathon, she PR'd her half marathon by seven minutes, I believe it was seven minutes that she PR'd within four weeks, and, it, and this is after being in the program for, for a few years. She's consistently getting better, and she's consistently progressing, so, Again, we we can we always match the body athletically to what it wants to do. Whatever new challenges it wants to do, we are there supporting it and giving it. Because whatever you progress to do, you need to condition the body for that 
new level of activity, you know, going into correction and off, you know, that that's, that's one level. And then you're, you know, whatever race you have ahead of you and that's great, but then you have a new body, you have new mechanics, you have new muscle. So you have to actually condition those things. And then your body's like, Oh my God, I want to do more things. And so people always want to do more things once they get corrected. And so then we condition them to do whatever those things are. So many people become tri sport athletes in our care because they feel good. And they go from not being able to do five miles without pain to becoming tri sport or an Ironman. It's, it's actually very common with run pain free. So, or they do triple, yeah, I, to, I call it the triple challenge where they do Berlin, Chicago, and New York, you know, it's within six weeks, three marathons, or they want to do all majors. And we do have several people on our roster who will be world major marathoners, which is 1% of all marathoners in the world. So we do really pride ourselves on giving you the foundation you need to. Do whatever it is you want to do. So this is her message to runners out there that are maybe, you know, dealing with similar things that she's dealing with or dealt with. Who's, who's struggling and they're trying to meet some PR or they're not able to run. They're not able to get out there and do what they love. You know, check out Run Pain Free because, I mean, I tell everybody, everyone, all my friends know, you know, it, it's, it's just such a, a, a blessing in my life. And, and I thank you for that. Who's, who's. So, yeah. So N N she purposefully wanted to say that and because she's been there and she knows what it feels like to sit in that pocket and then be on the fence with, with what you want to do next, because you've tried so many things by the time you reach one pain free. Some people come to us and they're like, oh my God, I wish I met you five years ago, a year ago, 10 years ago. And, and I'm like, it's fine, you, you met us now, and that's all that matters, and we'll get to work right away. So I hope you enjoyed this case study. I hope you got some insight to what shin splints really are. I hope you like my, I was really nice today with my reaction. Usually you get a bunch of eye rolls everywhere, but you know, I have to figure out how to get my eye rolls on my screen for you all. <laughs> I'm known for my eye rolls, but I hope you have an amazing time listening in, tuning in. Again, if you're listening to us, come on over to our YouTube channel, Run Pain Free YouTube channel to see all the visuals that I had today. And uh, I'll be back with a new case study very soon in another podcast. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Run Pain Free podcast. If you are looking for next steps in helping with running pain free or recovering from an injury, here are the two most helpful things you can do right now. One, you're already doing it. Keep listening to all of the Run Pain Free podcast episodes. We've got some awesome injury recovery training in every show that you can implement right now from whichever podcast platform you're listening to us on. And second thing is, if you are serious about injury recovery, running pain free or living pain free, go to runpainfreenow.com slash apply dash now and apply for a one-on-one -on -one consult with me and we will go over all of your injury recovery goals, challenges, next steps, and a movement assessment. Go to runpainfreenow.com slash apply dash now. Thank you so much for listening to the Run Pain Free podcast. There are so many podcasts out there, so we really do appreciate you taking the time to tune in.